So today we'll have a look at this over here. Trading view on the iPad Pro. Is it any good? Is it pretty okay? Is it average? How can you use it to trade on the go? We'll dive right in. So this iPad right here is a device I've been using for the past, I believe six months or so. Anytime I'm traveling or on the go. I usually bring this only and I leave my laptop at home. This time I've got my laptop too, but usually it's only the iPad. And I've kind of got to use this a lot and I've kind of got to see what works, what doesn't work on it. And whether the trading view app works good for trading, looking at your charts, and just placing trades live in the market. One thing I'll tell you quickly is that this app is a lot, lot better than what you will get on TradingView on the, on the browser. And I'll show you what I mean here with a quick, very simple demonstration. Now have a look at this. This is the browser version of TradingView. So I'm using this on, of course, Safari on the iPad. And it looks quite good from here, but the only thing you'll notice is if you ever want to go full screen, because for some reason you want to see your whole charts, like you can't see your chart like this and that's all cool, but sometimes you want to have like a bigger version. You want to be able to hide what's in the top. Like this part over here is taking space. We don't want to have that. So we got to go full screen. And as soon as you do that, it looks nice, but then there's no way to get back to the normal view. You cannot change charts, you're stuck there. There's no escape button on the iPad. So you're pretty much stuck in this, this mode. There's nothing else you can do about it. And that really sucks. The app on the other side has been built for the iPad, so you can go full screen easily, you can change charts, you can also go completely full screen with this button over here. Then you can just go back by tapping this small icon here on the side, which says go back like this, and we're pretty much good to go that way. So a big difference in how this works out, and it just makes it more enjoyable to use it on the iPad app, as opposed to the Safari browser. I wish, however, you could hide this bar at the bottom here. You see you've got your menu, news, ideas, that stuff takes a lot of space. It'll be good to hide this once in a while. Just get rid of this and be able to just look at the charts without having these buttons on the side, which are kind of handy. You can use them, but I don't care about ideas. I don't care too much about the news. I don't care about the menu at all. So I prefer to be able to take this off and focus only on the charts. Maybe keep this small bar here where you've actually got your uh, menu full screen, all these tools, which we'll go into very soon and kind of like just make it more full screen because the iPad is already small that way. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, we've got the same thing we've got on the browser, right? You've got the charts, you've got the layouts, layouts are controlled with this button over here, which if I just tap it, I'm gonna use the, uh, the Apple Pen to make it better. You can just right away go through different layouts. So we can do two charts, you can tap again, you can go on multiple charts that way. Now I get crowded very quick on this iPad because it's quite small, it's the 11 inch I have. I might want to go for a 12.9 inch eventually, but for now that's the one I have, and that's, it's more portable, let's just see it like this. And that's kind of the, the point of the iPad. Uh, from there, you can go, of course, on the full screen of any chart. So if you want to go on the, here I have a daily chart on top. If I want to go daily chart, I should go here, and then I can do the full screen icon here. So that shows me the full chart, the full daily chart only. If I want to go on the power chart, just have this one. See, it's going to be highlighted. And then we can go full screen on this, this chart here. Uh, what else? Well, let's go on the other side over here where we've got our handy little tool here for the, the, the pairs. You can just scroll like this and you'll be able to change pairs that way. Okay, so here I'm on USD Hong Kong dollar. Here I'm on GPUSD. It's gonna change pairs quite quickly that way. And that's quite nice. Uh, if you do wanna have a custom pair, something I kind of took me a while to look at, let's say like with friend, like you talk about different things, they tell you about a stock and you're like, oh, I'm gonna check out that stock eventually. I'll have a look. Just tap on this. If you tap on this, it's gonna pop up a menu where you can actually enter any instrument you'd like. So let's say I'm gonna go and I wanna look, have a look at Tesla. I'm gonna type in Tesla here, boom, and here we are. And the chart will load. Now this will stay here in your sort of watch list. And you'll be able to see, once you scroll back, you'll see Tesla again. And you can kind of refer back to it easily that way. Uh, the other things here are filled in by my watch list, which you can customize, of course, in the watch list menu. So if you just tap here, I've got a few watches that I kind of follow. I have one here for Forex, which is my thing I trade for Forex. Uh, so these would be the, the things I would see when I into the Forex watch list. If I go here on the top, I can choose my other watch list that I have. So I have a Forex Weekly, which I don't use. I have an investing. So this one I use to invest. When I look at like different stocks, different indices to invest in. This is my watch list, so I can go on the chart. Then you'll see the things coming up here. There'll be all the things in my stocks or like investing watch list. So I can just go back and refer to it easily. And that kind of makes it for a cool way to like change watch list that way. Uh, you kind of have the old pairs, like here I have your CAD somewhere because I was there before on that chart. Uh, that's not in the watch list, that's just like the one I was on before. 
And on the other side of this, on the right side top, is going to be your time frame. This is where you kind of change your time frame. Again, you can scroll through different time frames, which are your favorites. Or if you want to have something custom, then just tap on it and you can choose whichever you want. This is where you can add different intervals here. Let's say I want to look at the eight minute charts. I'm going to go here, I'm going to enter eight minutes, add, boom, and this is here. If I want to have the eight minutes as my favorite, I can just tap here again and I can just long tap on the eight minutes and then do add to favorites. Very simple. Then once I scroll to this again, you'll see I have the eight minute charts over here, which I don't care about, but it could be cool to add. If you want to add custom time frame, you want to be able to kind of switch back and forth. Uh, it's kind of cool. One tap, go over here, remove from favorites. And I'll also delete it because I don't care about the, this. Perfect. What comes next on this little bar on the side over here is our fancy little chart type. So we've got all our different chart types. There's a lot of them here, more than you could ever care for, but they're there if you want to have them. It's got bars, which are basically the bars like this you see on all charts. You got, of course, candles, hollow candles, which are different kind of candles, which I'm not really familiar with too much. You got your columns, if you care about columns. You've got your line, line with markers, step line, areas, which is like the typical finance graph. Uh, you've got your high, low, close area, which is something I've never used. A lot of things you can choose from here. Uh, typical Hakanachi, which is kind of handy to have it here quickly. On platforms like MT4, it's not there. You cannot get this easily. You gotta install a plugin for it. But here, straight through on the platform directly. Renko, okay, uh, Kaji, whatever. Uh, point and figure, yeah. So you got this here in the range, of course. So a lot to play with here. If you want to change and try different types, you can go here, try it out. I'm gonna use stick to candle because it's the one I use the most. But it's kind of there for you to uh, to go through. Uh, here on the other a little bit on the right, we've got our we've got our intervals, which are different kind of periods on the charts you can go through to kind of see a better perspective. And to be fair, I've never used this ever, but it's there if you want to have a look. So, for example, a five days interval into a five minute breakdown. So what that would be is it will be over five days. So here we see on the left side will be five days ago. Here will be on the right side will be today, basically. So five days from the start. And then we've got our charts here. So by, I mean, this is this is by five minutes. So it's there. So of course, yeah, you sure we could scroll back. We could do it by ourselves. We could change the time frame here at the bottom. We could just do it ourselves. But if you have a handy tool to kind of look maybe look at a week, like a week in the past, uh, this is a cool thing to do. Or if you want to have a look at the year, okay, one year today in one day interval. So this is one year ago. We started here on the left side. One year now we are here. Okay, kind of cool. Kind of cool to have a look at. Uh, so this is something that you want to, you might want to try. You might want to not care about it too much if you don't care about it, but it's there for a reason in case you need it. All right, let's have a look here on the right. We've got all our tools in this like little pen icon, which is why you spend most of your time if you use Training View a lot. We can actually look at many, many things to do on the charts. You got your favorites on top, and the way you add favorites is simply you click on any one of them. Let's see here, I have Fibonacci retracement. I'll just tap it and then do add to favorite. Then it's going to be in my favorite which is also going to be here on the charts. This little bar over here, which you can drag around and move, is going to be your favorites. So you can put it anywhere you want and have it to draw like very easily like this. So if, if I wanna go here, Fibonacci, okay, we'll do this and then we're done. I don't use Fibonacci myself, but it's there for people who care about it. Here, I'll tap it again and I'll just remove from my favorite. But you've got all the things you found on the desktop, they are all here. Okay, there's a ton of stuff here. Uh, more than you would ever care for, but it's all there if you wanna have a look at it patterns, prediction measurements, uh, and then the icons and whatever is, is there, okay? Uh, and then you've got also a lock, you wanna be able to lock and not be able to draw. You've got drawing mode. Showing the favorites on charts, you can turn it on or off, up to you. Magnet will be to kind of connect things, like when you draw a trend line, it will link to the price more easily. A bunch of stuff you can add, the eraser also. So a lot of things you can play around here, and the measure too, uh, if you care for this. Okay, it's there. You have a choice of using it or not. Uh, but that, that's about it. Here the F is all the indicators you wanna think about. So I've got my own scripts here that I use a lot. Uh, you might have other scripts which you can just kind of go through and search. Uh, technicals, of course, financials. You can always search here for anything you would like. So if I wanna look for the RSI, I'll just type in RSI. It's going to be here on the top. Very easy to use that way. All the scripts are there. And once you had scripts to your chart, they will show up over here. So you can just tap this little uh, number here with your number of scripts in the charts. I have eight right now. Most of them are hidden because I don't use them too much, but I have my bong set up. I've got some EMAs that I use in the charts. And here's where you can customize to if you want to have them only show on certain time frames. I've done a video on this, it's going to be linked in the corner if you want to check it out. 
where it will show only some time frames. Which you click on this one over here, then go to visibility, and this you can change which time frame you want to see the indicators on. I only want to see my EMAs on the daily chart and above. I don't care for them on lower time frames. It's, so it's set up that way over here. Okay. I've also got my Tokyo session breakout, which is over here. Now you see it's hidden, but it's because it's only showing some time frames. I only want to see this on the one minute to the 59 minutes, so only like on lower time frames, and it's there. So cool way to kind of deal with your mini indicators in your chart. I don't care to see all of them. I have some strategies on low time frames, some strategies on bigger time frame that I don't care about on lower time frames. So I have a mix and match, and I can only see what I care about on different time frames. So it's pretty handy, pretty way to, pretty cool way to look at it. Okay, continuing on with our little bar here, we have the plus which is for comparing symbols, which I've never used too much, but some people like it. If I look at the zero CAD compared to the S&P, uh, we can just go here and do same percentage scale. What's this here? That's probably not relevant, but we can do new price scale. And we'll see how the S&P here interacts with this pair, okay? Which is not something you wanna do all the time. I'm just gonna delete that right now, but it's kind of handy to have a look at this. Now, by the way, you could also use this iPad only with the pen if you want to. I have the Magic Keyboard with it, just because it's kind of good sometimes to be able to type and add things and modify things with the, the keyboard. But if you want to use only the pen, you can definitely do that. It's fun too, uh, depending on what you prefer. I kind of like the keyboard for, sometimes it's nice to kind of scroll back to charts and stuff with the keyboard, uh, add things or whatever with the keyboard. So it's kind of a cool feature. Okay, next up, we've got our alerts, which are over here. Alerts is this. Now we've got an error for some reason, uh, but I had the lot before so that, that that worked out. Uh, so I had HGPY, these are alerts that are continuing. So they're basically on my Tokyo session breakout strategy. So some of them came up this morning, some of them didn't, didn't trigger yet, but they're always like, whenever they're set up, they will appear every single day, no matter what. So cool to have this here, if you wanna manage your alerts. Again, if you're here and you wanna delete alerts, just tap on it and then do delete. You can also go on the chart to open the chart directly but it's all there for you to have a look at and manage your alerts if you care about this stuff. This little square here is for indicators templates. If you wanna have different chart layouts, where like I wanna use multiple indicators in my chart, you can do this here. I've never used this ever at all, but if you care about like having different things, mine never change, you're always on the same on the chart. It's my default chart, very simple. Uh, but if you care for this, this is there to modify. Here's where you will go if you wanna publish a idea for all the traders to look at. I don't do this ever because I think it's a waste of time. But if you want to keep a journal that way, you can do it too. Where you publish your ideas, your trades, then have a look at it by yourself afterward. You can do that too. Very possible to do it. Uh, you put this here, you change your charts, and publish your ideas to other traders that way. This little tool here for sharing whatever you want to share. So here you see uh, we can actually save an image, or you can do all these things to kind of save your charts and have a look at it later. And you can also share directly to other people. Here I could do airdrop, I could do like, send this to in a text message to someone. I could use a bunch of stuff here to do that. These little arrows here you see, okay, we have got one on the left, on the right is undo, and of course redo. So if you wanna go back, you delete something by mistake, you can just go back, and it will kind of show again on your chart like this. Again, if you make a mistake, go back to, to undo or redo the other side, then you'll kind of have it removed on your chart, or whichever. Kind of a handy feature to have a look at here. This little eye, I've never touched it, but it shows you the profile, which you kind of have usually on the desktop on the little kind of sidebar on the right side. Uh, but this shows you the currency pair. You've got a few news events here if you want to have a look at. Uh, if you go back here, yeah, we have a look at, you can see ideas of people on this pair, which if you have a plan and a strategy you shouldn't care about. You can add notes to it. You can then look at the performance one week, six months, year to date, uh, one year. And then the technicals, if it's a buy or a sell, you'll see this over here. So if you wanna use that, you can use that too. You don't necessarily have to, but it shows you different indicators and what they mean on this chart. Um, and you could kind of use this for maybe, I guess, a sentiment or a bit of technical and use it for your own trading if you want to. Okay, moving on to this part over here, which will open a trading area. So this is a trading kind of thing. You've got a list of brokers here that is less than what you have on the desktop like computer version but it's still a pretty good list of brokers. So I've got my typical brokers, Wanda, 8Cap, Pepperstone, uh, that I could use, TradeStation. We don't have here Interactive Broker, which I use for my investing, but we have a good list still to, to use. Uh, I switched many different brokers because before I didn't have some brokers here, and I want to trade on my iPad, so I kind of moved to different accounts. But now it's pretty much close to the desktop version, a little bit less. As a quick reference, if I go on here, the desktop version of TradingView, and I just go and open the trading panel, 
you see I've got a couple more choices here. Okay, actually a much bigger list. Uh, so depending who you use, what broker you're on, you could kind of prefer the desktop version for this, or you could be okay with the iPad version, or whichever works for you. But you've got a much bigger list here, including of course for me, Interactive Broker, which I use for investing, which is over here on the top, uh, and also other brokers that you might care about. But otherwise, I think the iPad version has a pretty good okay list of broker for now, but they will for sure add more in the future. Okay, these three dots here are a pretty handy menu of all the stuff you could care about. And they're similar to what we've got on the desktop version too. So we've got here, uh, we can see the simple details, which we went over before. We can use the bar replay feature, which is where you can go back on the chart. Let's say I want to go back somewhere over here, uh, here, and I want to be able to replay the chart. So we can do that if you want to. The way it works is you tap on the chart, then you go back here in time. Then you can kind of like place trays, buy and sell, like do some backlisting if you want to, and be able to uh, make the chart go like one bar at a time, which is kind of, kind of handy if you want to do backtesting here on this pair. Uh, so, and then you could buy and sell and all that stuff. I've done videos on this in the past where I show you how to use the bar replay in step-by-step -step in details. Check that video if you want to have a look. It's a lot more in-depth than what we'll cover here. But it's a cool feature to have for, yeah, going back to the trades or testing different strategies. Okay, back on this menu here, we've got our chart settings, which are all the settings you have on your desktop. So you can, you can add the buy and sell buttons if you want to. So you can see the button, they appear on the top, left side and left side of each chart. We can just tap it to buy, tap it to sell, very simple, and that, that is kind of cool to have if you want to day trade on this. Uh, we can see here our positions. I show mine in, I don't care about the money, I don't care about the ticks, I show them in percentage because it's better for my mindset. I don't want to see how much money I win or lose in that trade, I just, I just don't care about it too much. It's more emotional when you do it this way. If you have your profit and loss in percentage or even in ticks, which would be like in pips, it's a lot less trouble for your discipline and, and confidence. So I kind of like it that way better. Uh, and all this stuff is here, which you play with if you want to, and you can deal with it. So it's pretty nice to have this over here. We've got some shortcuts for series, which I, I never cared about or use. And we can see here our object tree if you want to delete some things easily. So you could just go here and let's say I want to take off my, okay, my rectangle. I only have this on my chart now. I can just go X over here. The rectangle is taken off. And I can just undo here on the little arrow on, at the bottom to go back and uh, refix this here. Kind of a handy tool. Uh, other than that, this menu is quite simple. We can make a copy of things. We can add a new chart. We can load or save our template on our account. I'll just save mine here quickly. Uh, but it should save automatically also by default. But yeah, that's what we have over here. Uh, then if you have a look, we have simple kind of thing I talk about so the, here, the layout. Uh, the full screen on one chart, and then we've got the full screen on the all the whole thing. Uh, if you have your favorites here, you can still do your analysis in the charts. Uh, but what I recommend is do whatever you want on your chart first. Like I want to go on a daily chart full screen, boom here. Then I want to maybe add some more things. Uh, I'll just draw with these favorites I have over here. I'll just go full screen. Then I can just do my analysis with this. And I can do whatever I want to kind of look at uh, this over here. So kind of a cool way to do it. Then you can draw your, your stuff like this. Uh, you can add your lines, whatever. Okay, I'm just doing things for fun here. Uh, you can do this and draw your channels if you want to. Uh, it's kind of easier to do it full screen. But then you can add any other instruments or you can add any other tools. You gotta stick to what you have in your favorites only, okay? So with all that mess I've done in the chart, I'll just go and undo things here. Here we go. Then we can go back to the normal view here on this particular screen. So I've covered a lot here in this video. Hope you got some value out of it. As always, hope you got some tips on how to use trading view on the iPad. Any questions you've got about this, happy to do more videos on it. I can do a live trading example if you want to. I can go through some trades live with this iPad only. I'll show you I'm happy to do it if you want to. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions on this. And if you want me to do other videos on specific features on the iPad and trading view, or whatever else you can think about, leave me a comment below. I'm curious to hear as always. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done yet. I post videos like this three times a week, one interview every Sunday, and two videos where I teach you stuff about trading in the week where I use some tools, show you how to make your trading better. And I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.